Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's extremely foggy this morning. I'm not going to run anywhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until this fog lifts before I really go to hunt and fish. But uh, right now, the surface temperature is at 56 degrees. We've had a couple cold, cold nights, and water temperatures fell about seven degrees since the last time I went fishing. And uh, today we're going to be using live crawfish. And what I'm going to use is I have three rods rigged up right here, and they're all basically the same. Medium action rods. They're all six foot uh, six. Well, one of them is six foot eight. And I'm using 10 pound test braid, Power Pro braid, flora coated leader. This is made by Sea Guards, floor coated. And I'm using 10 pound test on this one with a double uni knot and just a size 4. That's a size 4 Eagle Claw hook. That's basically it. Now, today we're going to target fish with live crawfish. And as far as the water conditions is, the, the water is extremely low here in the Tennessee River. I don't like that. But it is what it is. So that means I'm going to fish a little deeper than I normally do for this water temp right here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to have to do is get in areas where there's shad so I can determine how to catch these bass. But I'm going to focus probably mainly on bluffs today. Let's get a crawfish out right here, laying right there. This is a rubber band. You can get them at Walmart, sometimes a dollar store. They're about three quarters of an inch in diameter. That's all they are. I'm just going to take this rubber band, twist it, make an eight out of it. And then I'm going to take him. Come here. Don't. He's got nubbins. He's got nubbins right there where I've declawed him. But them nubbins will still get you if you don't watch them. But I'm going to slip it over his pinchers like this. See? Them nubbins is grabbing that. you got to fight with them sometimes to get them on. But I go right in behind those two pinchers. I don't want any legs up under this rubber band. And I'll snap it. Like that. Okay, let's get us a rod. Now I'm using a size 4. Now on the crawfish... This size, this is a pretty good size crawfish. You could use, uh, see this is size, no this size two, excuse me. You could use a one or a one alt, but I'm just going to go with a small hook. Now notice how I've got my hook faced. It's towards the tail. And I get some questions about that. Now, when that bass grabs this crawfish, He's going to grab him any way he can, folks, because I visually have seen it in real clear water. I've watched that happen before. But he is going to turn him in his mouth, and he's going to turn him tail first to swallow him, just like that, down the hatch. When he does that, this hook is going to lay down like that. Well, that's a perfect position to set the hook. And it'll catch him in the roof of the mouth normally every time. But now if I were to reverse this hook like this, just like that, okay, same thing. He's going to swallow him the same way, tail first. Look where that hook is. Okay. Number one, the hook is faced the wrong way. And what will happen, this line will crimp when that fish locks down on that crawfish, just like that. So when you set the hook, that line has got to slip between his jaws, his upper and lower jaw, and turn like that to catch him. Now, a lot of times, that's why you'll miss one on the crawfish. That's the exact reason why. Because if that, if them jaws is locked down on that line real tight you're not going to get a hook set he'll feel that tension open his mouth he'll blow that bait out and you won't have nothing you'll feel the fish but you won't catch him <laughs> that's what i'm saying 
There's a bike. Well, it's about time. They are slow today. I'm stitching this crawfish right here, folks. Fishing it, making a cast, fishing it back real slow. Let's see what we got right here. There he is. Now, this may be a bass. I feel some head shakes down there. It is. Finally got us a bass here. Right here in this cut, I've anchored up. Not much of one. He's a spotty bass. But I'm stitching. It's an old-timey technique. Let's get him. Put him in the boat. He's heavy, but it's a spotty bass. Small spotty bass. He's pretty, though, ain't he? And that fish come out of... This is about 15 feet of water right here in front of me. And it's just a trough, a cut. He picked it up down there deep. Well, we did catch us a bass fish, a drum, and now a bass fish. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about stitching. It's just an old technique, and it works, but it's a slow technique, but you never know. I mean, this bite right here could have been a big fish, but it just so happened. This one's seen it first. Let's let him go. Okay. Woo. Woo! Caught a bass fish. Let's check our crawfish out. We may can use him again. If he's not crushed, we can. See, his shell's not crushed. This crawfish is not hurt. We can just fish him again. And that's the good thing about a rubber band. I'm not hurting the crawfish at all. See, it's real cold. He's he's about as active as he's going to be. Now, when he's on the bottom, let me put him out here. That's about what he'll do. Unless he sees a rock or something like that, and he'll try to get up under it real quick. But they know what he is. He don't have to move much. And I'm stitching. Yeah, let's rig him back up. I'm going to pitch it right there. Now, I pitched in around eight feet of water, and it tapers off on each side right here. It's, it's, it's just, a, look at it as a trough, and there's a center line right down this trough. Okay, that's the deepest part of it, and it just troughs back up like that. And, and I'm working it off the side of this eight feet of water, and I'm coming out to about 15, and that's where that fish hit right there at the deepest part of it. Let's see. Yeah, he's on the bottom now. I'm stitching is just... Wait a minute. We may have a fish on here. Let's see. Yeah, we got a fish on here. I believe, let's see. No, we don't. That crawfish is acting up. There could be a fish right on his tail now. I was trying to explain. But stitching, you just, yeah, there's something going on right here, folks. You just slide the bait back to you real slow. Oh, we got a fish coming to me right here. But they hit that light. That crawfish is really flipping his tail right now. So he's seen something. Let's make another cast. But when it hits the bottom, stitching is something you can do with a plastic worm in the wintertime or summer, either way. You're just moving it just a few inches at a time, just little bitty movements like that. And you're feeling for rocks as you're stitching or anything like that. If you feel a big object, just let it lay there, especially a live crawfish. And you'll get that bite, but something's going on right here. That crawfish really got active and active quick, and they'll do that. When a predator like a bass or anything else, like, see, see how he's getting active right there? He's flipping his tail. 
He's telling me there's something right there, right now, as we speak. We got a fish on here right now. He picked it up, moving this way. I don't know if he's big or little or... Let's see what we got. There he is. He ain't very big. It's probably another spotted bass. Man, he's fighting though. So we got a few fish found right here. Maybe a large jaw. Now nah, it's another spot. He's a little bigger than the last one. See, I told you. You can you can tell what's down there just by instinct and reading the way that crawfish is moving. You'll develop that instinct. That's a little bit better spotty bass than what we just caught. I'm just going to net him. On this one, I just have an eight pound test. Leader is all. That's a pretty good spotty bass. Right there. Quiet. And I almost let him go too long. Do y'all see that? But it's not down in his throat. It's right there on the top. That's what I was talking about. When you hook them crawfish that way, normally you'll hook them right in here. Right in this area here. Or back there. But back there is not going to hurt him because I did. I almost let him run too long. No doubt. But there we go. Y'all can see he's not bleeding down in there so he's fine but if I'd have let him go five or six more seconds he would have swallowed it and we don't want that we don't want that at all let's let that spot go now they could be some more right here could be a school of them quit could be a five or six pounder in there you never know so that's two bass on one crawfish and a lot of the old timers used to say you can only catch bass on them or you're better off fishing them when they're moat. In other words, when they're soft. But now, they can be hard, they can be soft, it don't make any difference. Put in front of a bass or a flathead catfish, which flatheads love them, uh, drum, they are gonna eat them, folks. All we had to eat a lot of times is just if we was lucky, some beans and some taters and, 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 and a pound of cornbread. Now, let me tell you, either you'd eat it or you'd go to bed hungry. Now, this is a little bit deeper bluff right here, folks. And this is one of those bluffs that falls straight down. This is the kind right here. A lot of times, I hold more fish. There he is. He knocked the fire out of it. He sure did. As that crawfish was falling down, I talked about the suspended fish on bluffs using shiners, but now we're using crawfish. Now let's set the hook right here. Boy, well, he's way over here. That's a little better spotted bass, but what it is, they'll see that crawfish as it's falling, and they can't resist it. That ain't the big boy, but it's getting a little bit better. It's a great way to fish for suspended fish. Come on in here. I'm just going to grab my line, folks. I'm kind of in a hurry, but that's a good spot. We're getting a little bit better quality fish right there a little bit better let's let him go get us a crawfish on here as quick as possible they're giving rain this evening so I'm trying to move pretty quick alright let's pitch it in there 
and we're gonna let that crawfish just fall now maybe them fish are still there it won't take long yep there he is he done got it again and they they're hitting it and coming to me for some reason Let's catch up to him and put that right there in his nose. This one right here is a little better fish. Little better. There we go. Golly, boom, spotted bass can fight. We're going to net that one. Ain't that a pretty fish? I love the way they're colored up. When the water starts getting clear in the winter time, they get a beautiful pattern on them. Okay. Woo! I'm talking about woo! Now, a chunk. Now, they all seem to be about that size. Does that mean all of them are? No. That one I seen... That first one that I seen following one in, folks, was a good fish. I mean, a good fish. That's a good fish, too, but I mean, it was. y'all know what I'm saying. Let's let him go. Poetry in motion, okay? That's all they are to it. The fish are right there. Right there. So what I'm counting on to happen is that crawfish, as he's following through the water column, I'm hoping a bass will see him on his way down because these fish are suspended right here. There he is, right here at dark. Knocked the fire out of it, folks. Let's see what we got. Y'all ready? There he is. My goodness. My, my, my. Uh, he ain't that big, but he's a spotted bass. That fish is going crazy. He's going crazy. He ain't that bad, though. Let's see if I can flip him. Golly, what a beautiful fish right there. Well, that's been really the tale of the tale today is just catching spotted bass. I never did get a crack at a big fish, but I caught a bunch of these. And it's a lot of fun. We caught them two ways today. We made a long cast and uh, worked it along the bottom. And now we're just throwing up against the bluff and catching suspended fish. Two different techniques. Same bait very very effective because fishing is a sport well it's second to none Woo! folks i'm gonna have to get on out of here it's a getting dark but um yeah like i said two different techniques making a cast sliding that crawfish across the bottom another way if you're bluff fishing with crawfish and remember don't use any weight it's not necessary i can fish a crawfish in 20 to 25 feet of water using this technique they'll go to the bottom um throwing up against a steep bluff one that, that comes off straight like that and deep you can catch them suspended fish using this technique i want to say thank y'all very much all the great comments and woo Oh, don't it. Let me add this. I love each and every one of y'all, and God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey, I ain't got nothing to grab a hold to. <laughs>